If this political season has reminded us of anything, it's the simple fact that we need to exercise better judgment in what we say and choose better ways to articulate what we think. Whether we're on the left or right politically, we need to elevate our explanations of why we think the way we do so that good-hearted people will at least recognize we are seeking understanding. That does not mean we simply seek agreement because sometimes the differences are so stark, compromise and commonality are impossible without someone changing their mind completely, maybe both of us. So we seek to be understood and persuade, which requires seeking to understand, which requires listening to those with whom we disagree. However, the focus here on an American missionary is the spiritual arena of life rather than the political and cultural. That's not to say political and cultural beliefs are irrelevant. They are relevant to everyday life and carry great potential for good or evil. It's just that they're far less important than our beliefs about God. This need for better ways to articulate our ideas is especially important in the arena of religious traditions. For instance, have you ever noticed how neophiles, those characterized by an overwhelming compulsion for anything new, will accuse traditionalists of intolerance for not accepting their new traditions. They are quick to use Judge Not from Matthew 7-1 as a metaphorical club to beat the figurative snot out of anyone they consider a traditionalist. Sometimes they'll be more subtle and use snide innuendo to ridicule and impugn others for not jumping on their bandwagon. But their anti-judgmental attitude is still very judgmental and intolerant. In that sense, they're no better than the so-called intolerant traditionalists they're attacking. The reality is that both the neophile and the old school, we've always done it this way type, can practice intolerant traditionalism. We must be better than that. Because we all have traditions and do things in traditional ways, we are strong traditionalists when it comes to defending our traditions. We simply are. The only real difference is which traditions we cherish and want to preserve. The sooner we realize that, the sooner we will stop calling each other names like traditionalist or neophile and find common ground in God's word to rally around together. The only ones who can't do that are those who either reject God's word or are determined to fight with anyone who has a tradition that looks different from theirs. We must be better than that. The same principle applies to judging others. No one is exempt from making judgments or being judged. In every aspect of life, we make judgments, from the clothes we wear, to the car we drive, to the neighborhood where we live, to the friends we choose. We pick the ones we want, and by that choice, we reject the ones we don't like. So let's stop judging others for judging us. Some of the most judgmental people around are those who judge others for judging them. Those who do that are really saying, you can't judge others, but I can. Really? Well, who made you or me the judge of who can make judgments? We must be better than that. Let's admit we all have traditions we like and traditions we cannot tolerate and find better ways to explain the difference. Ways that don't find us doing the very thing we cannot tolerate in others. And most importantly, Let's all agree that God's will judges what traditions we can and cannot tolerate and seek to know and obey Him. If you can't agree to that, then please explain why without being judgmental and intolerant. Well, thanks for watching Morning Minutes in the Bible on Traditional Tuesday. Until tomorrow, this is James McClenney hoping you have a great day.